People often ask me, what's the best way to get good at programming? A lot of times my answer is to do small projects quickly, as fast as you can with short little tiny little deadlines, and build skill over time through repetition and experimentation. Basically, do game jams. If you're not familiar with game jams, they're a huge part of the culture of being a game developer. Basically, a game jam is a challenge with a specific short amount of time where you have to make an entire video game. Sometimes you have to make all the art yourself as well, but in any case, you've got to figure it out and somehow make a game while the clock is ticking. Now, my tool of choice has got to be Unreal Engine. My name is Woody. I make content about Unreal Engine inside Unreal Engine. And today I want to talk you through how best to use Unreal to do a game jam. Recently, I had the pleasure of getting to work with some of my favorite people on a game jam. Savannah XYZ, Demon Dev, Starcrafts, and Yasha Moonchild. We did the GMTK jam. GMTK is an enormous jam, and I feel like I shouldn't even have to explain it because it's everywhere. Every year GMTK is a theme. This year was roles reversed. I got together with two of my teammates, Savannah XYZ and Demon Dev, AKA Paul, and we talked a little bit about the project after it's over. How would you guys explain what the concept for our game was? Basically, instead of being a guy with sword, you are a sword with guy. Yeah, the sword dragging the player around was just like the coolest idea. This video is sponsored by Sony, whose Mocopy we used while we were doing the jam to be able to create some assets really quickly. Mocopy is a highly portable motion capture system that fits in your pocket. You can wear it and connect it with your phone to be able to save animations on the go or connect to a PC in a game engine or a space like VRChat. I really like their little system. It's quick and easy, and it's really fantastic for making game assets quickly. And what better than a game jam to be able to explore this? Here's what the Mokopi looks like on our character. It turned out really neat. This was not my first game jam of the year. And if you've been following this channel, you know we actually hosted a game jam pretty recently. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of advice, both for Unreal devs and for any developer who's trying to make really cool, intricate stuff in a short amount of time. Now, I know what you're thinking. Woody, use Unreal Engine, this engine that makes AAA games for a game jam? Yeah, actually, yeah, it's a great idea. You should totally do that. Unreal Engine's blueprint code system is a really great way to make prototypes, and prototype is a really great word to describe a game jam game. If you're making a small game in Unreal, you can likely export it for under two gigabytes, which is what most people are looking for. So you should be able to get it under a gig so long as you're not trying to use any crazy assets. You can bake out an EXE and you can upload it to itch. Let's talk about building. You can get your game to play in the editor and maybe you don't have any errors and maybe nothing pops up after you're done playing, but does your game build? Does your game actually export? Can you actually get an EXE file? That's a really important question. I recommend that people export their game liberally. If you're doing a 48 hour jam, know that your game compiles and that it can be exported and keep doing that because you never know what'll happen later in the jam as your game gets more complex. We kind of waited to the last minute to export our game and things got a little weird. I remember saying, oh, we should probably check to make sure the EXE exports. And then it just didn't. And we're like, oh. <laughs> now we did do that like, I don't know, like two hours out from the deadline. So it was unfortunate to lose almost like two or three hours. I think Unreal Engine has a large build time, especially if you haven't done it before, where you have to like install some uh, Visual Studio libraries. The last thing you want to see when you hit the like export button is like, you need to install some new libraries. A lot of times Visual Studio like wants you to restart your computer and you know, it's like a whole thing. When you're in a game jam, you don't have a lot of time. So you gotta pick and choose what's important. For a lot of people, that's gonna mean programming. And if you're working solo, maybe you don't have time to make any assets. The good news is there are so many free and fast resources to be able to do this. A great example is Quaternius, who makes free assets that you can use and you can just plug them straight into your game jam game. Amazing. The Mocopi was huge for us because I could just put it on really quickly. I plugged it into Unreal Engine and then we just recorded things right inside Sequencer. So they were right on our computer, ready to go. In fact, at one point, Paul looked at me and goes, yo, you should make eight directions. And I should mention, we had five different lead character designs. So I authored out eight directions for five different characters. This is really cool. We were able to just slap those right out. I really enjoyed the process. And I pass all the data on to Savannah, who is doing our key characters. It's game jam. Like, there are no rules. You'll meet lots of people that like to say things like, oh, you have to make every asset from scratch, or oh, you have to do this, or oh, you don't overscope. It's got to be 
gotta make a game by the end of it or you failed. And like, that's just, I don't know, it's just not true. The next piece of advice I picked up from my teammates, which is make your game really easy to play. Now, if you have an Unreal Engine build, it's gonna be tough because people are gonna have to download the game and then decide they wanna play it. This is gonna be really important that you make a really good trailer that you can put up if you have time. I would say just even a little bit of gameplay that you can put up as a GIF is a really strong indicator that your game is worth playing. Especially in a big jam like GMTK, it's gonna be hard to get people to look at your game and if you wanna win, you're gonna need a lot of votes. Not being able to just instantly play the game in the browser is something that's gonna hurt you. Currently, Unreal Engine 5 does not by default support the ability to build stuff for platforms like HTML anymore. Time for a little mini tip. Unreal Engine will typically build with super high quality settings. Now you wanna knock those down, you wanna do it quickly because this is a game gem. So you can use this set overall scalability. You're gonna put a zero, one through four, and that's gonna change everything. That's gonna correspond with the engine scalability settings that you're gonna find over here. Now, you could also look into pixel streaming if you're an Unreal Engine user, and that's kind of interesting. New platforms are popping up that will allow people to do cloud computing games that will let people play your game right in browser. Make sure you check your Game Jam rules about where you're allowed to link people or not link people when it comes time to deliver the game. The next tip is get some buddies. Part of what's so fun about all of these for me is getting to work with cool people. We actually spent an exorbitant amount of time just making a really cool stream overlay because we streamed pretty much the entire jam. This jam personally was sort of a triumph for me because we had a really good time with source control. Like nothing really went wrong. We didn't have any failed merges or anything. Source control basically did everything we wanted it to, which is really hard to maintain. If you're in a jam and you're working with teammates, make sure you communicate a lot. Make sure you track everything, get it all put back into the main. My last piece of advice is to build something that you can take home. During this jam, I was able to code up some really great modular combat. All of the combat mechanics lived inside a single component that we could drop into the characters. This was really wonderful because it allowed me to keep programming even when I didn't have access to our key character, who Paul programmed. If you're gonna do the jam, build something that you can take home and use for another day, whether that's a really cool asset, a piece of code you might wanna be able to use or learn from later, or just anything at all that you wanna be able to take with you as a learning experience for whatever you're doing next. Part of what makes the like game jam so amazing is that it sucks, like the time constraints, it forces you to, I don't know if be empowered is the right answer, but like not be like as paralyzed in decisions sometimes. I, I don't like being a hindsight hero when it comes to things like that. Like, oh, I really screwed up. I really should have, I should have known better. I should have done this, I should have done that. It's like, well, whatever, it's a game jam. Shit hits the fan all the time in game dev. Um, even when it's like all professionals working on a AAA game feel like, oh, I probably won't finish all these. Like, who cares? Uh, it's a game jam. Any game jam that will allow you to pick an engine, you should think of as a great opportunity to keep experimenting and keep growing and keep learning new stuff. Thanks again to Sony for sponsoring this video and for making cool motion capture tools that we use to make this possible.